today I'm going to talk about lighting. So, of course, in photography, we always have to deal with lights because as you remember, photo means light and graphy means writing. So, writing with lights. So, when we're talking about lighting, there are two basic characteristics of lights that you need to know. Number one is the direction and number two is the degree of diffusion. When we're talking about the direction, the, usually we're looking at where the shadow falls because also with this direction, it can emphasize the texture and the volume on the subject. When we're talking about the degree of diffusion, usually it refers to the quality of light. For example, there is a direct light, there is a diffuse light, and also there is directional diffuse light. So the first thing, um, I'm going to show you some examples that I will be using natural light and also artificial lights. Here for this lecture, I'm not going to use any professional lighting equipment, but actually I'm going to show you how to use any lights that's available in my house or at your place, anything. So because the challenge is actually uh, how do we create a beautiful images without any professional lighting equipment. So first one is backlight. What is a backlight? It is the light that comes from behind the subject towards the camera. So usually the subject is silhouetted. Of course, you can compensate it by having additional fill light. So that's an example of backlight. So soon you'll see that actually I'll be using natural light and also artificial light. So the next one I'm going to explain about side light. Of course, side light, usually the light comes from the side of the subject. So when you're using a side light, usually it emphasizes more volume and texture on the subject. So you will see later on this video also the result of using natural light when uh, there is a side light coming in or also with artificial lights. So that's what I'm going to show you soon. So the next one I'm going to talk about front light or frontal light. So this light usually is being placed behind the camera directly towards the subject. So usually in this case, compared to the sight light, um, the subject will looks more flat. So people usually like to move it slightly a little bit towards the side so it's not completely directly frontal. So you'll see some example very soon. So remember, there are three things under direction. Number one is frontal light. Number two is sight light. And number three is backlight. So uh, I just explained it to you about the direction. Now I'm going to talk about the degree of diffusion. So when we're talking about the degree of diffusion, there are three things that you need to know. Number one is the direct light. Number two is the diffuse light. And number three is directional diffuse light. When we're talking about direct light, usually the light is very harsh. For example, if you are shooting under sunlight, it's bright, bright, sunny day, then there, you will see that, that harsh shadow under the subject. So now I'm going to talk about diffuse light. When we're looking at uh, an image that was done with diffuse light, using natural light, usually it's during a very cloudy day. So there is no harsh shadow at all on the subject. The third is directional diffuse light. So this is a combination between direction and diffuse light. For example, you'll see it soon that when you take the photograph of the subject very close to the window, so you'll see there is a light that's actually hitting the subject and the light actually bounces around inside the room. So that is called directional diffuse light. 
So now I'm going to talk about three points lighting setup. And this is usually being used for an interview for a very simple headshot. So when we're talking about three point lighting setup, usually there is a key light and that is the main light, which is usually the strongest light. Number two is a fill light and it works to add the shadow area. And number three is a backlight. The purpose of using a backlight is actually to maximize the depth between the subject and the background. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about flash, something that you probably need to know. So it is very, uh, a little complicated uh, when you're using flash because flash is a non-continuous light. The stuff that I was talking earlier is natural light, of course it's continuous. And the next one is the artificial light, which is also continuous light. So flash is non-continuous light, which is also known as a strobe light. So one thing that you need to know about using flash is very, very important that you need to synchronize your shutter speed accordingly. And of course, every camera will have a different setup. So for example, if you're shooting with a flash and your shutter speed is really fast or too fast, sometimes you will get only partial image. So you will start seeing on the next example that actually there is this black border or lines that block some area on the image. Okay, so, so I'm gonna show you that Actually, when you're using the built-in flash on your camera and when you try to adjust the shutter speed, it is, in my camera, it is automatically stopped at 1 over 250. But again, some camera probably stops at 1 over 60. Some camera will probably stop at 1 over 125. In a film camera, totally manual, if you look at the numbers on the shutter speed, usually there is that one number that's printed in red. And that means you should not be shooting faster than that red number. So here in my camera, again, it's one over 250. So one last thing that I'm going to talk about flash here is of course, we always think, why do we need to use flash? Because of course there is not enough lights, but you can also use flash outdoors. And usually flash can be used outdoors as a fill light. As an example, you probably have experienced this. You wanna shoot because there is a beautiful sunset on the background of the subject, and you will have the option. Okay, the subject will be silhouetted then this is a time when you want to use flash outdoors. In that case, usually you want to slow it down a little bit, your shutter speed. For example, using my camera before I mentioned one over 250. In this case, maybe I want to set up my shutter speed at one over 60 or one over 30th. And again, with a slower shutter speed, you have to tell your subject not to move because otherwise it will be a blur shot unless if that's what you want. Again, flash can be used outdoors as a fill light. So one of the most important thing that you need to know about color temperature or white balance, it is measured in degree Kelvin. Therefore, when you buy a light bulb, even from the hardware store, check that Kelvin temperature. Sometimes it's just written in K, okay? So that relates to either daylight or tungsten. So daylight, usually it's around 5,200 to 5,600. It's around the range of these numbers in Kelvin degree temperature. Tungsten, or also known as incandescent, is usually around 2700 to 3400 degree Kelvin. So the color of daylight is actually blue, and the color of tungsten, or incandescent, is actually 
orange. So the lower the color temperature in degree Kelvin, the warmer your image will look like. So this is very important to understand because we always understand that actually blue is cool and yellowish orange is hot. But in color temperature, it's completely the opposite. Blue is hot and orange and yellow is cool. So I'm going to show you example very soon by using a lighter. So I'm going to show you an example right now using this lighter. Now, if you touch the blue part, of course, it's hotter than if you touch the orange part. So it makes sense, right? Why blue is actually hot in color temperature and orange or yellowish orange is actually cooler so don't get confused this only works in color temperature so it is very important for you to understand how to adjust your white balance on your digital single lens reflex camera and also the, you have to question what is the lighting source that you have because if you have a daylight lighting source, you need to set up your white balance accordingly using a daylight. If you're using your white balance incandescent, then your lighting source has to, use, has to be incandescent as well. So remember, tungsten and tungsten are incandescent, daylight and daylight. Then everything looks normal. Now, there will be a challenge when you are shooting with a mixed lighting source. For example, you have a daylight coming in from the window and you also have a tungsten or incandescent lighting source as your main light. So this is the time when you have to make several decisions. For example, one, you can change the light bulb into a daylight Therefore, that natural light that comes from the window is going to match with the daylight lighting source that you have, right? So that's one thing. If you want to get, uh, so the result is going to look more normal. That's if you want to get a normal look. Everything is neutral. But again, this only works when you're shooting and you know that your final result is going to be in color. When you convert everything in grayscale, it does not really matter. So I'm going to show you right now using this light bulbs. If you look at the box here, it says 2700 Kelvin. And here, the color temperature it is explained so this is incandescent so you know when you're shooting with this the color is gonna look warmer the other one here which I got it from a hardware store you it's also explained daylight 5000 K luz natural or natural light it also explain on the other side how many Kelvin degree so when you're shooting with this and you have a natural light coming from the back then everything is just gonna look more neutral but if you're shooting with this and you have a natural light coming from the back then there will be a color shift. This is a good example of daylight versus tungsten. And you will also see the result from the photo shoot. Okay, so I'm going to show you right now the three-point lighting setup using all daylight lighting source with whatever you have in your 
apartment or in your house. So, number one, I have this floor lamp that I changed the light bulb with a daylight. I'm gonna call this because now, as you can tell, one of them is actually covered with a trash bag. So it will diffuse the light. Number two, I have my reflector here as a fill light. And number three, I have the window and the window light that comes in is actually going to be the backlight. So you will see a little bit of the highlights around me. Okay? So now I'm gonna have the photographer taking photograph of me using this three point lighting setup in the house. Okay, so now I am going to purposely ask the photographer to change the white balance to tungsten or incandescent. But all this lighting source are still daylight and you will see the result very soon. So now I'm gonna show you with a different kind of lighting source. I'm gonna purposely mix the lighting source. I'm gonna have all these daylights. I'm gonna add tungsten light or incandescent in here and you will see the result soon when the white balance is actually going to be measured for the incandescent or for the daylight. So this is an example right now with a direct light. You can start seeing the shadow on my face. So now I'm going to show you to shoot outdoors with a reflector. But as a matter of fact, I'm not using a real reflector, but I'm using this protector for the car dashboard. So look at the difference here. So now I'm going to show you shooting indoors with the window lights, first of all, without a reflector. As you can tell right now, there is this ratio between the brightest and the darkest area. But if you started directing your subject to move slightly to the right side of my shoulder, then you started seeing a triangle coming in on the shadow area. Now, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to add the reflector. Now you can start seeing that actually, even on the shadow area, now it's brighter. So, this is a lecture about lighting and color temperature. So basically, I want you all to be creative because you can use anything in your house. You can use aluminum foil. You can use even white paper like this just for a reflector. You can change around the light bulbs. The most important is just be productive and creative. Just keep thinking about the final result so it's very very important to pre-visualize before you shoot it so i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you again next time